Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I you know, I'm not terrible. Let the child be shot. I'm good. You wearing the hat on TV? <laughs> I'm gonna take it off for me. Advertising. Okay, go ahead. I like it. Do your thing. I'm gonna start wearing these hats. Right, look a little bit like October, but you good. Do what? <laughs> she said what? October. This is a summer hat, baby. Okay, well, that's all right. Uh, oh, I see what she's saying now. I told her, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all right. But I everybody think, uh, can't, that's the summer everybody, club, everybody, right? everybody can't do it. No, they can't die. No. Nah. Can I take your chair? I'm sorry. I won't take my chair. That's your little cup. Oh, there it comes. No. Oh, yeah. This is the one he got. Yeah, that's your cup. <clears throat> All right. Let's do it again. Pastor, we're probably going to bring you up about 20, 35, something like that. We ain't, I don't want to start off talking about the graveyard. No, don't start talking about the graveyard. I thought it was the last guy. But we want to ease it to the grave. They come to the grave. Oh, okay. Thank you. Miss Debbie, yeah, yeah. Miss Debbie, I'll be glad when y'all get that speaker fixed so I can hear my intro in the evening. I got James on the phone right now. <clears throat> He's going to take care of me. Okay. Because this will be all right when I'm on the phone because he get it wired like a mic. Because when she comes in, it's going to be delayed. You bring, you bring it on down. Let's get that fixed. You, can, you bring that down. I'm bringing it down. It's going to be delayed. It's going to be off. Ten seconds. I'm bringing it down. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two. And just when you thought it was safe, it is absolutely positively not. And good Tuesday evening to you. I am the one and only. I'm Thaddeus Matthews. And welcome again to Steel, the most controversial, the hardest hitting, the rawest, non filter having, not, not giving a damn who I talk about, television talk show, anywhere in the country. Thank you so very, 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 very much for being here. Uh, I got my hat on this evening. And normally I'm not a hat wearing guy. But I was at my favorite Claudia, M&K, and I had this on, and I went in there for another reason. Y'all know I'm always in the clothing show. And uh, he put this on my head, and I thought I was looking kind of handsome myself. Then I know a lot of you men, you, you got jay, you got jealous, because first of all, you, you don't understand fashion, and you don't understand style. Some of you uh, jean wearing, everyday wearers, uh, you look like a pumpkin. Well, I'm the cutest pumpkin in the damn patch, okay? You wish your mama looked as good as I do. But I'm, I'm going to start coordinating because, see, here's, here's something you need to understand, brothers. I coordinate. I, I got this shirt on that matches the stripes and the suit. The tie, coordinate, and then let, let me show y'all these these shoes. Do I need to show them the shoes? Let's see if I can take a, a shoe off and show you how you. Uh, well, I can't get to my foot. My feet. Then you get you a shoe that coordinates the whole thing. I'm I'm just trying to give you guys. Uh, an ensemble. Go down to M and K. Uh, it's Father's Day on this Sunday. Go get yourself a uh, an ensemble. You ain't got to look 
as suave and debonair as me. I, I was down there the other week and I got nine suits. Uh, and then I took the suits there and I took them to my tailor and she said, please don't give her name out because she be working very, I want the, I want daddy bear on my clothes. Okay. Now put Raymond on your clothes. Uh, but I take them and I, and I do my thing to them, okay? I do uh, my thing. So, uh, yeah, I never have shoes on that does not coordinate with the rest of the ensemble, okay? You don't put a brown suit on with black shoes. Okay, no, 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 that, you don't do that, okay? Uh, I'll put brown shoes on a black suit. So you, you, you don't do that. You want to coordinate. And I know some of you brothers, you, you get a little jay because you don't know how to coordinate. Okay, because y'all still walk around with your pants hanging off your ass. So we definitely know that you don't know how to coordinate. You you walk around with your pants hanging off your ass with dirty drawers on. So you damn sure don't know how to coordinate, okay? Oh, doo-doo stained drawers hanging all off your ass and your pants hanging down. No, brother, so I know you get to change. And, and, I, and I understand that some of you right now, your woman's looking at me and she's drooling. She's excited about seeing an alpha male, a successful black man who's sure of himself, full of himself. He's tall, dark, and handsome. He's a little arrogant. He's a, he's a powerful, influential man. And she look over at your ass, well, damn, you just leave her. So, uh, hey, the pastor is in the house on the seat. Hoping that your day has been simply marvelous. Now, I know as hot as it is in the studio, I ain't going to keep this hat on my head um, long. But I, I just want to come on. Uh, yeah, Quilo. Pastor, they put your... Yes, they did. And Moses is going to be on the show on Thursday night. He's coming on the show on Thursday night because it's Father's Day. And I do want, Moses has been advertising with me now uh, over two years, continuously, every month. Uh, he spends money. He makes money in the black community, and he's giving back in the, in the black community. Now, Moses is, what is, he, what is he? He ain't Iranian. He, Jordanian. He's Jordanian, okay? He's Jordanian. And... He gives back. He spends money with this black business every month. Every month. Every month. Now, I appreciate him, and uh, I'm going to allow him to come on the show for a few moments on uh, Thursday night. But if you want to go ahead on and get your little Father's Day gift, Dominique called me today. She came to my church Sunday. I told her, bring your gift with you. She got a new boyfriend. Uh, boyfriend, you want to get in good with me, you need to have a gift as well. So I got to see what Jocelyn's going to do. And my son probably ain't going to do a damn thing, but uh, we're going we to see. And all of you ladies that call me daddy, all you ladies who have called me daddy in the past, be good to daddy and daddy will be good to you, okay? All right. Enough about that. Oh, Sunday morning at the Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministries. My Father's Day message is going to be entitled, Who's Your Dad? That's going to be the title of the message on Sunday morning. Who's your dad? You need to come and be a part of our morning service on Sunday morning. Do not forget that on Saturday, Florence had a devil now. All right. Yeah. Um, don't forget Saturday from 10 until 4 o'clock. We're having no more secrets, no more lies. We're doing a workshop on sexual abuse. A lot of young ladies, a lot of you old ladies have been 
traumatized and you're still going through the trauma of the sexual abuse that you experienced as a child and you never got over it. And I want to deal with this. We're, we're going to have the Memphis uh, Child Advocacy Center that's going to do a two hour presentation. I'm bringing in Wilma Shaw all the way from Houston, Texas, all the way from Houston, flying her in. She'll be in here on Thursday night because them flights on, on Friday was real expensive. So I'm bringing in a day early. And uh, I wish I could find me. I got a place to put in real nice because I, you know, I don't go nowhere else slouchy. Uh, so we're going to put her up real well. And she wanted to stay over the Sunday. I said, no, that's eight to nine. But we're going to bring her here. We're going to keep her here. So she probably wants to come and be in worship with us on Sunday morning. All the way out of Houston, Texas. She is a motivator. She's a sexual trauma expert. That will be a question and answer period. It's going to be something that you need to be a part of on this Saturday from 10 on to 4 in the gymnasium of the Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministries. You got a female group or you got a girls mentoring group or you the girl scout. Bring all the young ladies you want to bring. Those of you as mothers, you need to come and hear what's going to be talked about on this show. In fact, Wilma will be on this show live on Friday night. All right, now, let's uh, get off into what I want to talk about on tonight. I'm going to deal a little bit with two subjects on tonight. Leomi or Limomi uh, cheats. The white woman that put the two black children in dog kennels, rode around downtown, went to see Elvis Presley, uh, went to Collierville with these two young children that supposedly are called grandchildren. They charge her with two counts of child endangerment. Gave her a hundred dollar bonus. And we as a city, we are accepting that. I haven't heard none of these Negro ass preachers. I haven't heard the NAACP uh, S C L C C O R E P U S H. I ain't heard none of them damn alphabet having ass organizations say a damn thing that in 2018 it's all right for a white woman to put two black children in a dog kennel and it's all right. It would have been wrong no matter what the color happens to be. But now, a hundred dollar bond, then I, I got the reason I don't think that the law is right. Now, I'm going to deal with that tonight. I don't think that the charge is right. But then when you are a white woman that's been working for Fred Smith for 40 years at Federal Express, and he the most powerful white man in this town, and what Fred Smith Master Smith says happens in this town. See, y'all scared of white folk. You scared to make white folk mad, and then when white folk use their influence <coughs> against us, you don't say a damn thing. I, I, I pull the codes and the law, and I, I'm going to deal with that. Uh, let me do say that the bond was not set by Lewis and I. The bonds were set by the judicial magistrate. That's who set the bonds. Uh, and 
most times the judge don't change the law. But I think it's a shame that this woman was able to get out of jail on a hundred dollar bond. The the the, grand, the grandma. Mm -hmm. The mama's name be Jermel Hillier. I'm not sure she lives in Memphis. I do know that she's got uh, a relative, a close relative, probably a sister by the name of Chrissy Hiller that I think is right down in the South Haven in the Mississippi area. The daughter ain't white. And you can see that the children were not white. They ain't even mixed. So I'm, I'm not sure yet, and I'm still working uh, to find out the relationship. But I think that she should not be charged with a misdemeanor, but felonies. And I'm going to read the law on that in a little bit. But here's where I want to start off tonight. This morning I'm laying up in bed watching the news as I normally do. And a breaking news story comes out concerning a 12-year-old young lady being shot in Frazier. The mother is now facing charges. And in fact, let me just read the little news report. A Memphis mother now faces criminal charges after her 12-year-old daughter was shot Tuesday morning. Memphis Police Department arrested Katrina Blackshire, 33, uh, hours after the shooting that took place around 8 o'clock a.m. outside the Greenbrier Apartments on Maywell Street. Blackshire's daughter was waiting in her mother's car for a bus to take her to summer camp. She was in a car with a 13-year-old boy. I think that that boy has been identified as her brother. Neighbors said they saw the two children fighting in the car. Minutes later, a gunshot rang out through the parking lot. Cashmere Clemens ran outside after hearing the screams for help. We stopped, we stepped outside, we saw a little girl on the ground. You know, everyone was just around her, calling her name, trying to get her to, you know, come back. But she wasn't come, responding. I think she's coming come back. back. It's just traumatizing. It was a little kid. She doesn't deserve that, she said. The girl was rushed to the hospital in extremely critical condition where she later died. MPD has not said who pulled the gun's trigger or said uh, exactly how the gun got into the vehicle. However, uh, Blackshire is charged with aggravated child abuse and criminally negligent homicide. The 13-year-old boy who was in the car during the shooting is charged with reckless homicide. Tuesday afternoon, Memphis Police Department stressed the fact that gun owners need to keep their weapons locked up and secure. And the story goes on with talking about gun safety, but when are we in the black community going to say, enough is enough? When does it stop? The mother, whose only other charges I found were uh, driving charges, 2008. She went in the store, I guess she was tired of the shoes she had on, and they had some shoes in the store on display, and she took her shoes off and got some more shoes. You know, I mean, maybe she just got tired of wearing the shoes she had on. That was in 2008. I think she was about 23, 24 years old, according to the uh, police report that I pulled. Maybe she just got tired of them shoes. And the store had a whole lot of them. She put her pair on 
and you know was walking out the store. Um, when, when does it stop? See, I'm telling all these preachers, all you Negroes ain't doing nothing but hooting and hollering, running and jumping. When the hell are you gonna start talking to your folk about things that really need to be talked about? When Jesus died, yeah, he died. We know he died. And we want to tell the same stories week after week, but we don't want to tell the story to our people that is going to save their lives. This mother, gun in the car. Children fighting. Why y'all fighting? Why are you fighting and the mama in the car and can't tell you to set your ass down? Y'all ain't got no more control over your children. Somebody said stop when both sides so black and white communities need to come to a profession, a who? A profession standoff and talk in a place of law. What? What the hell are you talking about? No, it stops when you as parents take control of your house. When you take control of your children. <clears throat> How are you fighting in the car with your mama in the car? How did the child get the gun? Who got the gun? Who shot who? I know the mama just didn't pull up the gun and just shot the children. But children, I know sometimes you parents with these badass children, you want to do something. But when does it stop? When do we as a people, see y'all, this ain't nothing y'all can blame on white folks. Talk about both communities need to come together. Black folk ain't killing white folk. Y'all ain't going to the white communities killing up white folk. Y'all killing your own folk in your own community. And we sitting around with the we shall overcome going to the damn mountaintop as speeches, but we're not taking possession of the issues in our community. So it's, 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 it's a shame. It's, it's a shame that we are able just to sit back and let these things happen. Where the black ass lives matter for gay? Black lives matter. You want to protest when it's white folk involved. But when you gonna do something yourself? It, it, it was like I said last night. You, you, all you, we shall overcome Negroes. All you folk that wanted to take the statues of the white folk out the park. Now, and, and here was my issue on that. You will be mad as hell if the white folk said, let's take my Luther King statue down. Let's go on Beale Street and take the uh, W.C. Handy statue down. You be mad. That's your history. Well, damn, as bad as white folks' history may be, they got a history. And the reason I said don't take them down when y'all talk about it, you need to be reminded of the bigger than white folk in this country. You need to be reminded that it ain't the white man that's your problem right now. You your own damn problem. Do you think I gave a damn about a statue of, of dead white folk? But not one of you Negroes have said anything about the white woman that works all, that's right, you Negro politicians can't say nothing against Fred Smith. Because Fred Smith will give you niggas a little tokens, your, your 30 pieces of silver for your campaigns. He buys himself niggas all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fred Smith and white bigots who are in development in this town woke up and they said, how much is that nigga in the window? Talk about you nigga politicians that won't do a damn thing to change the condition of black folk in this country. How, how much is that? 30 pieces? Oh, that, we can get that nigga for 15 pieces or so because he wants to be a part of the establishment. He's not going to vote for anything for black folk. He's going to go out and say that, you know, uh, I got to work with my co colleagues. 
I look at North Memphis, I, when y'all built the Sears Tower, and you Negro City Council members supported that, but what did the black folk in that area get out the deal? Where was the development in the North Memphis area? Y'all took the old Sears building and you made it into the concrete. They couldn't have got the money, they couldn't have did anything, especially when black are the majority on the council and the commission. But this was a, a city project. You didn't even leverage your power. You the majority on the city council the white developers got everything they wanted, and the people that live in that North Memphis area, Bell Wall, Smoky City, Scullerfield, New Chicago, Klondike, didn't get nothing out to deal. When you could have simply told your white colleagues, no. We don't mind working with you. We don't mind uh, taking on this project. But what you gonna do for black folk in the North Memphis community? Mm. Mm. It's a shame, I tell you. It's, 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 it's a low down, dirty shame that we keep putting these sorry ass Negroes back in office that ain't doing a damn thing to help our community. Let me show you. Y'all keep putting that, that, <laughs> okay, be nice, man. No, I ain't. Y'all keep putting that white boy Steve Cohen back in Congress. Steve Cohen who plays into black folks' mentality. Steve Cohen last week when Alice Johnson was released from prison, a sentence was commuted. Just because George, I mean, who else is that, George Bush? Uh, what's the man's name? Trump. Trump, Trump. I got a warrant, John, I should have thought about that then. Uh, Trump did it. He found something negative to say about that. And you're representing the most Negroes in a concentrated spot in the state of Tennessee. Now, I know whoever your ignorant ass is that's calling me. You can see me on the TV. Don't you see me on the TV? Do what? I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to none of y'all. Damn it, I don't want to talk. I'm talking right now. Steve Cohen had something negative to say, well, because Trump did it. And let me tell you something. Let, let, let me tell y'all something. And I'm, I, and I'm deviating from the program. I don't give a damn about a Republican. I don't give a damn about a, <coughs> a nothing happening, poor, broke ass Democrat. You get these politicians that want you to be concerned about party. And the Democratic Party, neither the Republican Party, is doing anything for the betterment of black folk in our community. But see, I'm a, I'm a Democrat. Negroes, until 1963, you were, vote, you were voting, when you first started voting, you were voting Republican. You don't make your politicians respond to you. They just do anything that they, they want to do. Anything that they want to do. And then y'all get mad because I said something about it. I don't give a damn. Ain't a damn thing you can do to me. I is free now. I'm not a slave to the mindset of what politicians want. Y'all let them close Northside High School in North Memphis. Okay? You let them close Northside High School in North Memphis. Man. They didn't build a new Manassas High School in Schofield because they wanted you to have a new school. 
the strategy had been, and I did a, a story on this probably 12, 13 years ago on radio, before they built the school, where the old Firestone plant was, they wanted all of that property that's still vacant now. They wanted to bring a golf course into North Memphis. Why do they want to go a golf course in North Memphis, that is? Well, thank you, I'm glad you asked. They had did away with Hurt Village. They eliminated the, the projects. They eliminated the projects and built new housing right there because when they developed mud out and moved all that, they didn't want the good white people and the folk with money passing by the projects. So they even start taking folks' houses in, uh, in North Memphis. Just taking your house. And they redevelop downtown. They redevelop downtown. They were going to put a golf course right there until me and two or three other folks got hold of the plans and started to talk. I started talking about it on the radio and the golf club of the golf course idea died. Well, the money had already been appropriated for the new announcers high school, so that's how the school came, and the old building right there is vacant. When you go into North Memphis now, what used to be a land of economic progress in North Memphis is now desolate. I can remember growing up in New Chicago, we had Jackson Cooking Company, praise the Lord. We had over on Empire Street, we had the toy factory. We had Firestone. We had the wood factory. We had Arrowglass boat factory. Come on down to Thomas Street you, and, and make yourself a right. You had the potato chip factory. You had Kimberly Claw. You had International Harvester. You had Bruce Hardware. You had Memphis Hardware. None of those businesses exist anymore in the black community. And we had a black mayor and black city council members. Hey, 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 who is this? What the hell you want? Hi. You have toilet paper. Do what? Toilet paper. What? I need some right now. You need some toilet paper. Then bitch, go, go and pull your curtain off the wall and wipe your ass with it. You going to interrupt me at 279-4699. Do what? Ma'am, you, ma'am, ma'am, you're not even comical. Two, y'all call two seven nine four six nine nine. This bitch crazy. She ain't looking for no toilet paper, baby. If you're looking for some toilet paper, go and do like you've been doing. Go take the end of the curtain, hang it up in your living room, and wipe your ass with it. That's what your ass been doing. So don't call here and talk you need some damn toilet paper. We ain't been taking no damn offering for no damn toilet. Ooh. Damn. Pastor, you see what I go through? She called me asking for some. She need some toilet paper. She just ignorant. Okay? She just ignorant. I'm ignorant enough to answer to you, too. Okay? My clap back a classic. All right. Let, let, me, let me do this. Uh, I'm going to come back. I will turn, hand it here, Miss, Miss, Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie is feeling sorry for your ass. Whoever you are with your shitty ass, we got four rolls of toilet tissue for you, okay? Four rolls of, I don't know how many plies is here. What's a good ply? Wait a minute. Let me see how many flies you get. Wait a minute. That was a white woman. That was, that was a white woman that called. I want the white woman to be able to wipe her ass. Let me see. This ain't no two. When you get two little sheets on it, that's two flies. Miss White Lady, 
I want you to be able to wipe your ass tonight. Miss Debbie said the pastor ought to give you some paper. So went back there and found some toilet paper. You you call back. Let, let me call the white lady back. I ain't got the phone hooked up. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't you find it? What about all of TV? I'm going to call the white. You know what? That was wrong for me to talk to the white lady like that about cleaning her ass. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call and apologize to the white woman. Because if I can hear somebody as I pass along. Then my living shall not be in vain. Y'all remember that song? Then my living shall not be in vain. Oh, my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as they wipe their ass, then my living shall not be in vain. Woo! I almost got happy on that. Turn it up. I, 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 I. This phone does not accept incoming calls. Message AL1. She don't like something. Come on. How you gonna have to leave some toilet tissue to wipe your ass and you don't accept no no phone call? See here I was trying to help. Okay. I'll take this toilet tissue over my house. <laughs> you better leave my tissue here. <laughs> the what? What the good? I can do what? So you better leave her tissue here. Can I have a roll? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Ain't nothing like the Thaddeus Matthews TV show. They need to hurry up and put me on the national TV. What am I doing to talk about? I put it down here. No, 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 I'll take it. <laughs> you you going to take it back? You going to take your toilet tissue back? Yeah. The devil came and took her toilet tissue back. All right, y'all. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. What's happening? All right. Let's take a commercial break. Then I'm going to come back with the law. And then by 8 o'clock, Pastor, I'm going to put you up. And we're going to talk about your cemetery. And take out some quick ones of them white folk cemeteries. We got, some, uh, we got a black-owned cemetery. But I'm going to come back. When we come back uh, from the commercial break, I'm going to tell you what the law is and what I think that uh, the lady should be charged with. If I can hear, ooh, that song just sticks. That's an old song. Ooh, that take me back to the number two choir. And Ellen needs a missionary Baptist church, 114 Henry, under Dr. E.L. Slate. If I can help somebody as I pass along this way, then my living shall not be in vain. Want to say a special good evening to India Marie in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm about to get to Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's take a commercial break and we'll be back right here on the Thaddeus Matthew Show. Let me hear it. I want to hear it. I want to hear how I sound on TV. I thought you had it up. What was, what was I listening to? It was, I can hear it a few minutes ago.
I ain't run for no office, baby. They don't make enough money. Yeah, bitch, you're talking about you must be meeting a lover tonight. Bitch, I can meet a woman any night. I can meet the chief. Baby, I'm sorry every damn day. You must be new to this. You bring her here and definitely come back? Huh? Uh, no. No, I'm, I ain't going to bring him up to about eight. Let me see how many folks I need to take over here. Can I take my hat off now, y'all? I'm asking all residents of Memphis and Shelby County to elect me, Floyd Bonner, as your next Shelby County Sheriff. Well, for little though, it's glad to have you around. There are politicians who, for their own selfish agendas, are upset with Tennessee's big senator, Reginald Taylor, from crossing party lines and voting to make life better for all Tennesseans. Isn't it a shame that politicians care more about party politics? It looks good for all the people of the state. Reginald Tate, a lifelong Memphis, had served well for 12 years and accomplished so much. And much of his accomplishment is because of his willingness to work for the people and not just for a political party, such as Medicaid expansion, Tennessee Human Rights Act, the expansion of theft related class E felony, providing free to print services for great. Hell, I'm, I'm in for Patty is here for you, baby. Well, won't y'all be glad when y'all see me on the national TV? I think I can outrate anything that's on TV.
or Steve Harvison, buy one and you'll get one free when you mention my name. Hey guys, don't let your mama beat you. Get you some red bombs too. Right here, there we can. You may have one of them girls that's on a budget and all she ever buys you is a damn tie. Well, damn, at least when you give a tie, get a quality tie. And, and look, girl, if you're on the deep end, let me tell you something. Uh, don't get Eddie Neal. Okay. You want to play it right quick? Yeah, I'm going to play it right quick, girl. I ain't in no hurry. I'll be in a nine. Is anybody clowning over here on the, on the Facebook? Let's see. Yeah, going to play it. Let me see who's clowning over here on the Facebook. Let's see. Right there at uh, American Way and Perkins. Okay. You know what Sammy's used to be? Yeah. Okay, that same lot. Okay. Around the front side. Okay. I ain't never been there. I don't know how they've been in the neighborhood. I ain't never seen them. Hmm. They've been there about uh, two years now. Okay. I'm going to go with them now. I'm going to go with them now. Who's clowning on the... Uh, on the page over here on Facebook, because I will take the ass off. This is the last one to set. Sharp is what I do. I define sharp. Okay? So, uh, but it'd be hot. So I'm, uh, I'm going to get some outfits that got the hats and the shoes, casual wear to wear. Look, ladies, Father's Day is coming up on this Sunday. Go get your man some sharp. Go to MK. Don't go nowhere else. I used to spend money with some guys, well, for years. Suits you. I used to spend money with them for years, and they never would spend no money with me. At one time, I was spending about $1,000 a month in clothing with them or more, okay? And I, I couldn't get them to advertise on the Thaddeus Man TV show. That didn't make sense. You do business with folk who do business with you, okay? 
I'm a businessman. I, I know I'm, I'm the best at what I do. Okay, but this is about money. This ain't about, you know, I used to, I used to, with these politicians, uh, I used to want to be all community man. These Negro politicians don't give a damn about you. No. So I get paid. Praise God. Y'all see those political ads on the TV? They paid me. They paid me well for those. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're a politician, you need to contact me. I had folks tell me, well, I don't like Reginald Tate. I don't give a damn if you don't like Reginald Tate. I got his record. I, I've seen what Reginald Tate does. I used to have listened to some of y'all. Uh, you know, he, he worked with the white folk. Hell, if the white folk control the money, who the hell are you supposed to work with? Now, come on. Y'all want to keep on working with broke-ass niggas that ain't got no money. Ain't got no damn and can't get nothing changed. If Republicans are in control of the House and the Senate and you want to get something done in your community, then you work with folk. That don't mean you, you sell it out. That means you playing the game. Politics is a game. It ain't nothing else but a game. Ain't no difference in a Democrat and a Republican. All you want done, okay, all you want done is to have somebody that is bringing something to your community. Now, y'all think I'm going to support who he running against? Katrina Robinson? We can't support Cheryl Wright's sister? Hell, yeah, come on now. She don't even support her own sister. She ain't been to court not one time with her sister. Not one time. Not what I was gonna tell you something, you know, because I talked to people that be on the inside of the jail and they told them something about Shell. I ain't gonna tell y'all. So I ain't gonna, <laughs> I ain't gonna, ooh, one of the God people told me something that happened with Cheryl Wright. I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't, I ain't gonna tell you. But we cannot support Cheryl Wright's sister. That's Katrina Robinson. I see all her little signs all over the area. No. I'm supporting Reginald Taylor. And I'm going to ask that you support I ain't gonna tell it either. I ain't gonna tell it. I'm asking that you support it. Forget about this Democrat and Republican stuff. I want you to support Floyd Bonner as well. Floyd Bonner can become the first black elected sheriff of Shelby County. Okay? Let's make a difference. He already got the job. He already doing the job. He's sucking in command. Let's support Floyd Bonner. Eddie Neal, let's support Eddie Neal, okay? Let's support him. Let's get G.A. Holloway out of there, okay? Somebody said, yes, I'm going to tell it. I ain't going to tell it. Sure was good when I heard it. So that's somebody on my face said, God is real. Well, how you wake your ignorant ass up this morning? Hmm. I ain't going to tell it. I, well, it was good, though. Okay, I'm going to tell you. One of the gods told me that they told Cheryl <laughs> they told Cheryl that, you know, she, she told him when she went to court the other week she tried to play crazy, you know, she was gonna swim out of jail East. So they went back and told Cheryl, Cheryl, if you really want to play crazy and get out of here, eat your own feces. 
Eat your own doo doo. So he said, Cheryl said, I don't do it. If, if you eat your own, if you eat your own doo doo, if you eat your own shit, they're going to know you're crazy and they're going to let you out. I swear, this is what the people told me that worked in the jail. Said, Cheryl sure went to have us up a bowel movement. I guess you want to get a full course meal. And one of the other guards said, when you eat your shit, I'm going to pass you a glass of water so that you can, uh, what was the word? Uh, so you can wash your shit down your throat. Because, bitch, you ain't going nowhere. So you might as well get used to the taste of shit because that's what you're going to be eating for the rest of your life. Now, that's what they say to the jail. I don't, I don't know whether she ate or not. Let me, let me do this real quick because I got the cemetery man here. And I, I, and I need to talk to you about supporting his cemetery. Okay? Because a lot of places y'all think is black because that's where all the black people go is not black, okay, it's not black on. Let me deal with this. Uh, somebody said, tell Floyd Barnum that all his big signs in Cordova are gone. Uh, I'll tell him, okay. The white woman, leave on me, cheats, has worked for Fred Smith for 40 years and nine months. She is an administrator in, I left the little note on my desk, in the IT department for security something. But she's a six-figure employee. I believe that her $100 bond comes because of our affiliation with Fred Smith of Federal Express. She was charged, she rode around 35, 40 miles in a Ford Explorer with the hatch down with the children in kilns, like they dogs. In fact, wait a minute. Let me read, I know. let me read the affidavit of complaint. And it goes with all the whereases and all that other stuff. But let me, let me get, break it down before I get so we you know, leave a magnifying glass. On the night of June 2018, a concerned citizen recorded a video of children being let out of a dog kennel that was, and those of you on Instagram, you are about to time out. So I'm going to bring it back up so that you mirror. Instagram only allows you uh, one hour, and then you have to redo it all over again. Uh, okay. Jamal, you go. All right. Let me bring y'all right back. Okay, on June the 9th, um, on the 9th of June 2018, a concerned citizen recorded a video of, a, of, a, of children being let out of a dog kennel that was stored in the back of a Ford Explorer in the 3700 block of Elvis Presley in Memphis, Shelby County, Tennessee. The video and license plate information was forwarded to the Memphis Police Department, who began an immediate investigation. During the course of the investigation, the Amoling uh, cheat was developed as a suspect after she returned home to the 1100 block of Mosby, down in Whitehaven. 
uh, both children were identified as J. Sheets Killer, age eight, and B. Sheets Killer, age seven, who were no longer in the kennel, but were seated in the back seat of the Ford Explorer with the Tennessee plates uh, BPORN2X. The children were briefly spoken to, and they advised there was no room inside the vehicle earlier in the day, and the defendant, Leone uh, Cheat, told them to get inside the kennel. The children advised it was hot in the back of the vehicle in the kennel. Uh, Cheats was interviewed and, and admitted to riding from Whitehaven to Collierville with the children in the camp. Cheats' father advised they also drove downtown. However, she checked on the children periodically and later removed them from the camp and put them in the rear seats of her vehicle. The temperature of that day uh, of today in Memphis reached 95 degrees and there were no vents in the rear of the Ford Explorer. According to Tennessee Code Annotated 33-15-401, Cheeks was charged with child endangerment for knowingly placing the children in imminent danger. What I said on last night, and I say it again tonight, that these are the wrong charges. I'm saying tonight, since I found out that she has been an employee of FedEx for 40 years and nine months, that Fred Smith is playing a role in this particular matter. That's my opinion. When I look at the law, I don't understand how she was charged with child endangerment, a misdemeanor, and given a hundred dollar bond. Now, I, I looked at two of the laws, okay? This one comes under 39-15-401, child abuse and child neglect or endangerment. Any person who knowingly, other than by accidental means, treats a child under 18 years of age in such a manner as to inflict injury commits a class A misdemeanor. Provided, however, that if the abused child is eight years of age or less, the penalty is a class D felony. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. That's what the law says. These children are ages seven and eight. Let me read that portion of that law again. Any person who normally other than by accidental means treats a child under 18 years of age in such a manner as to inflict injury commits a class A misdemeanor. That's what she's been charged with. Provided, however, that if the abused child is age eight years of age or less, the penalty is a class D felony. Any person who normally abuses or neglects a child under age 18 years of age so as to adversely affect the child's health and welfare commits a class A misdemeanor, provided that if the abused or neglected child is age eight years of age or less, the penalty is a class E felony. A parent or custodian of a child eight years of age or less commits child endangerment who knowingly exposes such child to or knowingly fails 
to protect such child from abuse or neglect resulting in physical injury to the child. Mm. Mm. I just gave y'all the law. For purposes of this subsection, knowingly means the person knew or should have known upon a reasonable inquiry that abuse to or neglect of the child would occur, would result in physical injury to the child. The risk must be of such a nature and degree that the failure to perceive it constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of care that an ordinary parent or legal custodian of a child eight years of age or less would exercise under all the circumstances as viewed from the defendant of standpoint. That's what the law says. And I'm reading from the Tennessee Code and the Tate. So these children are ages seven and eight years old. Why would the magistrate and the district attorney general's office sign off on child endangerment when the law is very, very plain? Let me even take it to the next step. Tennessee Code 39-15402. Aggravated child abuse and aggravated child neglect or endangerment. A person commits the offense of aggravated child abuse, aggravated child neglect, or aggravated child endangerment. Okay? Terms used in the Tennessee Code. Here's a bodily injury. I'm thinking when I read all of this that this child, this woman rather, should be charged with aggravated child abuse. Body injury includes a cut, a breach, and bruise, burn, or disfigurement, and physical pain, or temporary illness, or impairment of the function of a bodily number, organ, or mentally faculty. Code includes the Tennessee Code and all amendments. Um, a substantial risk of death. You're in the back of a Ford Explorer with a hatch down. I guess she had the damn air condition on her. But the children in the back, in the kennels, can't get out. A violation of this section is a class B felony, provided, however, that if the abused, neglected, or endangered uh, child is eight years of age or less, or is vulnerable because the victim is mentally defective, mentally incapacitated, or suffers from a mental or uh, physical disability, the penalty is a class A felony. There is no doubt that this woman, okay, is uh, receiving special treatment. The children, it states in the police report. Are we still on TV? What happened to that one? Y'all working on the monitor and the fan? Y'all don't know what happened? What overloaded? Right the fan? Oh, Jesus, don't let the fan go out. I heard the, I heard the breakup show. You heard the breakup? Yeah. Okay. But until we get the, at least the monotone, right. I'll leave that door so I can see the monotone there. What? has to take place, there's got to be an outcry. We are just sitting back. Sitting back. 
Now close that door because I'm I'm picking up I'm picking up the uh, the feedback out of there. Uh, we got to have an outcry. The law plainly and very plainly rather states that this offense should have been a felony. But then I guess when you work for Fred Smith and he controls all you politicians, there is not going to be an outcry. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's not going to be an outcry because we don't have the balls in this community to stand up. Your leadership is not going to call for the district attorney general's office to place the proper laws there or the proper uh, charge for this particular offense. It's wrong, but we have no one that stands up for the people in this community, other than the Thaddeus Matthew Show. I gave it to you. The law is very plain in what it says. What are we going to do? Nothing. Now, let me say this to a certain person that's on Facebook. And you know I love you to death. I ain't going to call you a man. Take that post off of Facebook down where you ask him, is there anybody that knows how to make check stamps? You know who you are. Take that post down. And y'all be wondering how the police catch y'all. Y'all snitch on your damn self. Okay? Take it down. And I see that the person that put it up, you own the Facebook page. And I love you to death. But you are telling the police that you are preparing to commit a crime. That's just like you idiots that get on Facebook and talk about uh, you selling food stamps. You got food stamps to sell. Who will the police monitor social media, and especially my pages? Okay, so if to that person, if you don't take down you, but take down the post, please. Do you know anybody that make check stores? That's just as stupid and dumb as it can be. Okay, don't, don't, don't do that. Because the police may be the one that answered. They caught that idiot that stole a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes out of Florida. He put it on social on Craigslist. He wanted ninety thousand dollars for the car. And the highway patrol folks responded to the aid. She took it down. Good. I'm glad she took it down. Okay. Because I don't want to see y'all just be dumb. Because I know if I saw it, the police going to see it. And y'all going to end up going to jail. And don't call me when y'all ask to go to jail. Because y'all know better. Just like mom and you said, you do better than that. Okay. All right, what time is it? About 10 after. Tell you what I'm going to do. Ooh, it's hot. I got a man here, Pastor Bohan, owns a cemetery. But before that, put the little girl's picture up. Put Myra uh, Allen's picture up. Myra Allen is still missing. 60 year old. She did come back. She left a voice message on her mother's phone. Uh, we need to find this baby. Okay. 
have an idea of the person who has the child. And I'm sitting up front, I'm on out to you tomorrow night. I left some things on my desk. I was running out of the office. But this is Myra Allen. If you see her anywhere, she is, uh, she's been missing now for over two weeks. Uh, she was last seen in the 1000 block of Peabody uh, wearing a black dress, blue jean jacket, and sandals with fur. Uh, when you find her, or if you see her, call the police at 545-2677. 545-2677. All right, I'm getting ready to take a commercial break. And then when we come back, I'm going to have Pastor Ken Bohan on the show and for a few minutes talk about his brand new cemetery. Ain't got the first body in there yet. Now y'all know y'all dying. Y'all have all them damn GoFundMe's and all that. Chicken sales and all that. And, and it, it's done got so bad now. And, and I tell y'all, uh, that I don't give my papillons no more. I did that. You can't read what it says. It says Captain Law, you don't. Um, y'all know something, y'all ain't got no insurance, and y'all be big. It got so bad this week, and I swear for God. See, at the church, Dale is a chairperson of the sad story committee. Okay? You have to talk to Dale about the sad stories. I don't want to hear So, a I swear for God, this is true. A lady the other day sent Dale a message that they had found, was it her friend Dale? Her friend dead in a house, and he had been dead for three days. And he was a veteran. And they wanted me to give him some money. Well, I didn't respond. Dale is over. The lonely, I mean, no, that's a, the, the sad story committee. Do y'all know the woman took a picture of the dead man who had been in the house for three days, laying on the floor, got a close-up of him, sent the picture to the church, see, he dead. I said, well, damn. I have seen a whole lot of dead folk in my life. I grew up working in the funeral home business, so I've seen a whole lot of dead folk. He was dead. He was real dead. He died with his eyes and his mouth wide open. But what I'm saying to you is, just like you prepare to live, y'all got insurance on your cell phone and ain't got none on you. But what Pastor Bohan has done, he has a brand new cemetery with the, the cheapest price in town. $1,100. That's for opening and closing. Okay? Opening and closing of the grave. $1,100. You ain't got to have no boat. You ain't got to have no wood box. $1,100. I'm going to take a commercial break, and then when I come back, then I'm going to have Pastor Kenneth Bohan of a monument of faith church on New Allen Road. He needs some dead folk. Okay, let me just... Is it true? Don't you need some dead folk, man? Hell. And I don't know how to put it. Sweet. Okay. Here's somebody that said, who cares if you have insurance if you don't have insurance? Now you can get your holy sanctimonious ass off my page. Damn it, when your ass die, your ass is going to need some insurance because your ass will be dead. Okay? 
<laughs> Y'all, you need so much showing. Take your safe communion's ass on back to your church home. Thank you, Todd. Todd, down at the one that comes and says, I look good. Thank you, Peggy. Yes, I do. Come back. But look, y'all folk die, then y'all want to set up them damn go fund me. My mama just died. You'll call me. Can you help my mama? Hey, I can't breathe no life back into your mama, and I didn't kill her, so what you calling me for? I used to do that. Two years ago, I spent nearly $20,000 on burying folk that when I buried them, they talked about me. Almost got the fighting in the cemetery. You didn't put my, you didn't put my sister in no vault. Damn it, you didn't buy no damn vault. I bought the casket. I bought the clothes of people on the show helped support it. We spent ten thousand dollars on that film. Then I bought the wretched ass mama. I bought her a house full of furniture. I was Captain Sabo. Thought I was a cash cow. Evan and George, hey girl. Pastor me to the hospital early in the morning to see you, baby. Because you got to have one of them follow little procedures. I'll, I'll be there. Let Dale know what time you, you go to the have a procedure, and I'll be there. Okay? And, 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 yeah. Then they got mad, too, Pastor. I didn't buy no damn string beans for the damn repairs. Damn, how much you want me to do? She wasn't my sister. She wasn't my daughter. I'm feeling sorry for you, your tragedy. I, and I got her a good casket. I get a, I got her a basement casket. Put her in a good casket. Then put her in no cheap casket. Got the dress. Paid the funeral home. Paid the cemetery. Bought the mama a house full of furniture. And then these Negroes, you gonna clown with me in the cemetery because I didn't buy no ball and I didn't give you no money for no damn t-shirt. Damn t-shirt. All you poor broke ass Negroes that wear all them damn t-shirts, damn it, y'all ought to put that, that t-shirt money in the damn ground. Take it to the funeral home and take it to the cemetery. Hell, whoever dead can't read them damn rag ass t-shirts y'all got in the first damn place. I don't know what the hell y'all be getting damn t-shirts for when folk dead. Rest in peace. Hell, he may not be resting at all. Like he wanted to die. Just rest in peace. But you can't pay for the funeral. But y'all go get the gold fund on me. I don't do it. If you are not a member of the Methodist Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministries. I'm not going to do it. I was, I was Captain Saber Hope. I was trying to save every hope that needed saving. I did. Heal about a hope needing a fuel. We, we give up. We, the hope got a fuel. Okay? And, and, and y'all wouldn't mind calling me. Uh, that Matthews. And see, and let me tell you what you ignorant ass folks do. Y'all pass out my damn telephone number. That Matthews will help you. I don't even answer the phone at the church. Don't call because I don't answer the phone. And they're going to tell you you can't talk to me. Okay? If you ain't calling me about some business where there's some money coming in and you're not a member of Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministry, don't call me because your mama died. Your mama probably was old enough to know her ass needed some insurance. Okay? If your mama's 70 years old, her ass knew at least 65 years ago she needed some damn insurance. Don't call me because I ain't got nothing for you. And I, I told some folk also, yes, I got a nice facility down there. And if y'all ain't got no place to have your mama's funeral, you have to pay a rental fee. Okay? I, I'm just not going to. It would have to be a tragic situation. For me to get involved. Y'all go right across the street to the hall and y'all pay them. Y'all go to these other folks uh, and, and pay them to have a repast, but you think I'm supposed to do it for free. Hell no. The devil is a lie. 
If you if you need my facility, it ain't what it's gonna cost you if you go to some hall for them. Hell, I get a utility bill. Look like I get a damn utility bill every week at the damn church. Every week. They're not, I gotta turn some air on. I got uh, uh, first of all, I'm not no longer am I gonna be used by folk who think that you're obligated to do something for them. I ain't obligated to do nothing. But for the members of the Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministries, I'm gonna help my folk. I'm there for my folk. But see, some of y'all go from church to church trying to rob folk. And see, church folk would be gullible. Y'all, we just wanna help somebody. Okay, I tried to help the lady with some toilet tissue tonight. She didn't want my help, wouldn't even answer the phone. Fine. But look, I don't do it. So when I come back from the commercial break, the owner of the Raleigh Frazier Memorial Cemetery is right up there by the church. Pastor Kenneth Bohanna Sr. Some of y'all got some dead people right now. Your mama done died. Pookie done died. He done got killed. Y'all ain't got nothing but a damn gold farming and got no damn insurance. And why is it that all the broke ass folks be trying to have a damn big film? You want a damn big film. I got the uh, R. Bernard film on 1895. If you ain't got 1895, 695, and you can go straight to the fact. Okay? Y'all yeah, saw the man when he was down there at the funeral home and they told him about. Uh, the $5,000 the man set up in the casket, okay? Uh, in fact, T, lead off with that commercial with the R.B. Bernard film. Uh, six ninety five, you can get burned up, okay? six ninety five, you can get burned up. If, if you ain't got no insurance, it's, well, Jesus, don't talk about people. Yeah, I, yes, I am. Y'all ain't got no money. And y'all walk into your home, you want the, the most expensive casket. If you don't have no insurance, and see, here's what funeral homes do not do in the moment. Ain't no funeral homes burying your mama and talking about a payment plan. You don't get your money once you, your mama go in the ground. Y'all ain't gonna pay no undertaker when, when the body go in the ground. Hell no. Y'all can't have no funeral. See, I said funeral, because y'all know what funeral is. You ain't gonna have no funeral until you pay the, the funeral. And even in 1895, you ain't gonna get no credit on 1895. So if y'all can't come up, put you together $695. We'll lay them on that table, let you people come back there and look at you, you can cry, fall out, and then that, that put them up on the conveyor belt and push the button, the dough comes up, and it goes, and you, 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 you can see the, the fire crackling. It's just a bubbling. And the body rolls on into the oven. That's what it is, it's an oven. It's about 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. Pull the dough down. You can hear uh, uh, the crackling. When, when they get to, uh, when your mama's done, or your brother's done, they go in there and they sweep all the ashes, put your mama them in a bag. You can take your mama home, get you a vase or urn, put your mama in the vase or the urn, set your mama back up there on, on the counter, and y'all come in and speak to your mama every moment, okay? 695, go straight to the fire. 1895, uh, you can have a film. Good film, nice casket. Uh, and if y'all can't find nobody to cry, I'll, I'll have some people to come and mourn for y'all at the film. We got everything you need. Look, I'm gonna take this commercial break today when I come back. Brother Kenneth Bohammer, the owner of the Raleigh Frazier Memorial Center. We waiting for body number one. Will you be the first one? <laughs> What y'all laughing at? You. <laughs> we trying to get the body. We trying to get the first body. The man said when you get the first body, they're going to let balloons loose. Ain't that what you said, Brother Lohan? 
they're gonna let balloons loose. See, see, now look, y'all ain't we were the first one to get in there. Y'all ain't even gotta go get those damn pigeons. Uh, they pigeons, isn't it? Doves. Ain't much, ain't much different in a pigeon and a dove. Y'all ain't even gotta get the damn pigeons, okay? Them some smart ass, them pigeons smaller than your children. They know how to come back home. They fly off for y'all and go back to where they live. Y'all can't even get y'all dead ass children, I mean your children, to come back. The doves, they ain't pigeons. Okay. Some of y'all children need some damn pigeons. They ain't even worth a damn dove. Let me take this commercial break. We'll be back right here on the Bad Hills Band Theory Show. In the time of a what? What? Come on, get, get him a chip. This water from last night. Did you bring some fresh water? Yes. Let me throw a little wake up. Nobody may pee in that water. Okay. <laughs> you can never know that. I told y'all don't come down here. We should have went to the Iron Mountain. Get my stuff and let's get him back. I mean, let's go. Woo. Yeah, put him over here. Oh. You about to fall? Yeah. Is this a new one? Yeah. All right. If they dead, they want me to be. They dead ass children. If your child dead, what they want you to say? What you want me to call them? Give them a call in your time of treatment. They dead. Uh, you don't want me to see. See the dollar. See the dollar. I have to do mine with mine on. We got to put rock in the tank? All right. We're going to get you some dead folk tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. That's my job. Get you some dead people tonight. Any of y'all on there on the social media, y'all got some dead people? Yeah, make sure y'all. Well, you don't get long to get there. Yeah, long to get there. We ain't coming to get them now. You have to get to Memphis. Well, let's see who being bad on Instagram. All right. Just ignorant of what you know. Are you on your Bobby Blue Bland? You ain't got no damn radio at your house, too. I miss my call. Opera land, you gone. We ain't even bury your ass. We're gonna just take you to the bayou. Oh. Human bones don't burn. You're a lying ass. Human bones do burn. Who said that? Some ignorant ass, somebody on here talking about human bones don't burn. Shoot. I done seen too many of them in the film business. I done put some folk in the fire. Then I, I picked up some folks that burn up in houses and stuff. You know what I'm saying? My breath stinks. Your mamas do too, but that's all right. You used to that. You gone too.
How many commercials you got in there? Yeah, play those two and bring it back to me. Yes, he can. Why, Bluffy? I don't know how I'm going to do it again, though. Good time. Because he came back with a new name. The name Bring me back after this one. to make sure that you vote for Senator Reginald Tate. All right, Kate, let me tell you about two other things right, real quick. I got a brand new, these folks are paying me to advertise these books. You want me to advertise? Did you bring that other book, The, the American Dope Boy? Bring it. You want your book advertised on the Thaddeus Man 2 show? Ain't but a thousand dollars a month. That's, that's all it is. I got, I'm, I'm going to start reading this one tonight. It's called The Pastor's Sins, A Mother's Secret. I don't know, I don't know, maybe the pastor was scoring the mother. I don't know. I'm going to take it on. I'm going to start reading this book tonight. He's from out, what is he from Texas, isn't he? I think he's from Texas. Uh, you can get this book. Uh, it's available on Amazon.com and Kindle. He, and he said he's going to donate 10% of the sales to the girls' mentoring program. I want y'all to get this book. He got it online, but I, his name is Michael Williams, too. Michael T. Williams. Michael Tyrone Williams. The Pastor's Sin. I'm going to start reading it so I can tell y'all about it. It probably got some good parts in here. She must be a lesbian. Wait a Celeste raises her hands to slap her. When she grabs her hand and begins kissing her while massaging her breasts and fingering her privates, Celeste reciprocates and they take it inside the house to the bedroom. Celeste asks her, does she have any dildos or strap-ons? 
she opens up the closet to display her toys. So let's grab her strap on, bend her over, and as if she was marvelous. Ooh, Jesus. I'm thinking, I know what I'm reading tonight. The pastor's singing. Lord, boy, you, you might have a bestseller here. And then we have the American Dope Boy. Uh, that gentleman was on the on the show uh, last couple of weeks ago. This book is brutally honest and unapologetic. It's about a uh, young man's role as a dope boy. Nobody said it would be fair. It's how you play the game. Both of these books. You got a book that you want to advertise on the Thaddeus Matthew show. All you got to do is contact me and have $1,000. Praise the Lord. I told you I'm, I'm about all business. Like Brother Bohannon is Pastor Bohannon. Of the, he's the pastor of the Monument of Faith Church at 4605 New Allen Road. And he is the owner of the Raleigh Fraser Memorial Cemetery. Man, how did you get in the cemetery? Lane. You had Lane. Well, okay. You didn't have no problems getting your permits and everything in place to... A lot of problems. Okay. You had a lot of problems. A lot of problems. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of problems with the code enforcement. Okay. To get them approval. Okay. The final approval uh, took us seven months. Okay. To go back and forth with the mountain tech and the non-books. Okay. That's a man who got trees and tell him he had a lot of trees and yes, it Wait a minute, they count the trees? Yes, and they count the trees and tell you, you got enough space between the houses that you uh, and the cemetery and all of that. You've got how many acres of land out there? Dedicated right there on that piece of property, 17 acres of the cemetery. Okay. We cleared one acre, uh, getting ready for burial. Okay. And we cleared as we, as we bury it, we're moving on. Okay. But there's something else unique about our cemetery. We're not just a cemetery, but we also in the community on purpose. Okay. Because what we are designed to do is to be a nonprofit and a church also, what we want to do is our neighborhood need revitalization. Okay. So what we decided, so much money goes into revitalization. Mm -hmm. Especially as you drive down the street going to the cemetery, you see houses houses that are boarded up mm -hmm. that needs to be um uh, either bought or torn down. Okay. But we need to do all that. Uh, so I believe that our cemetery will be the only cemetery that's investing in the neighborhood. Okay. And why would somebody go pay $6,000 uh, outside the neighborhood? Uh, and they live in the neighborhood. They've been in the ghetto. And we want to be in those aces where we are. And, and, and burial spots are not cheap. No. Okay. Uh, the average cemetery grave plot starts at a at about $2,200, $2,300. That's just the grade you have not counted in the opening and the closing of the grade. Uh, you have not counted in the vault. Because in most cemeteries in Memphis and, and even around the country, you have to have a concrete or a steel vault to go into, into the ground. And the cemeteries will tell you that that's to keep the ground from settling. Okay, so the price of those, and when I when I buried my mother, and I spent, ooh, when I got through with everything, um, the grave, uh, the vault, and then I was right, I was out of just about four thousand dollars. On just that end, we even talked about the funeral part, but just on that end, the burial was about four thousand dollars. You have a price here of eleven hundred dollars. Tell the people what they get for eleven hundred dollars. What I did was I looked at the cost of, of, of our land and, and what we need to do and the upkeep. And I figured that with 1100 that's going to include the plot and the opening and closing. That's total price. Okay. There is no other price. That's it. It's 11, bring you $1,100, and that's it. That's it. There's no other cost unless now 
Vault, you mentioned vault. Mm -hmm. Vault is a choice. Mm -hmm. If yes. you desire one, you can make one 800 and, and, and that's at your center. Right. There are cemeteries. You go to uh, South Wind, where my, my mother is buried. You you go to New Park. That's uh, they require vaults. And, and 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 let me let me share something with you. Many of you think that New Park Cemetery on Horn Lake and, and Swanee Road are black owned uh, cemeteries. They are not. They're owned by the Levis of the Lee, the Levy family. There is a Jewish owned cemetery that is in the midst of our community and they make millions of dollars off of black folk. Ain't no white folk going on Swanee Road, okay? Uh, ain't no black folk with no money going on Horn Lake. You go to Memorial Park, graves there, a cheap grave starts at about $3,500 because in, and I've been in the funeral business, working around funeral homes since I was 12, 13, 14 years old. You go into a cemetery, you pay special prices if you want to be buried under the tree to keep the shade, the sun off you. You pay one price. If you pay on the edge of the road, you pay a price. If, if don't ever have no lake in there and you get buried by the lake, it's a different price by the lake. You're all, they're all dead folk. But this is how cemeteries make their money. And here's what happened. Elmwood, yeah, someone put Elmwood. All of these uh, cemeteries cost you a lot of money. If you got the money, you got the insurance, then fine. Go ahead and do that. Okay, do that if that's what you want to do and you can afford it. But I see so many uh, folk, man, that have no money. You want to have extravagant funerals because y'all want to show out to the old folk and then the body goes back to the funeral home and stay at the funeral home two, three weeks. Oh, my. Uh, that was the case of R.B. Bernard. They had a funeral, nice funeral, two sets of programs. And they brought the mama back and the mama see it at the, at the funeral home for three weeks. Okay? Because they could not afford the burial. And, and the cemetery cost, ladies and gentlemen, is a separate cost from the funeral home. Funeral home what they want. They're going to try to get what they can get. Then the cemetery, you, you got to deposit your mama. You got to plant your mama. So there's a planting fee. Okay? So $1,100. Yeah, the other thing I want to, I've got to mention here is this. Uh, when you're talking about Amwood and all those other cemeteries, uh -huh. we, um, we are keenly aware of what happened to Galilee. We must bring that up. Okay. We are keenly aware of what happened to Galilee. We're not going to ignore what happened there. Three generations, uh, uh, and he got caught on the last generation of, of those static in the bodies uh, mm -hmm. illegally because they ran out of land. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've done is we make sure we have articulate record keeping, uh, law book, and computerization of every person that's entrusted to us. Mm -hmm. And we consider it a privilege to serve in our community and build. Now, I, I want this to be known. We can't help you unless you call us. Right. And another thing is they, they need to understand is some funeral homes are not recommending us because they're not getting kicked back. Okay. Okay. I am saying I'll give a kickback to a family before I give a kickback to a funeral home. Okay. 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 I was uh, also brought to my attention uh, by uh, I'm just going to say by uh, one of the noted pastors and respected in our city who says to me, "I remember one. I'm really proud that you're doing this, but I want to ask you something. To get you do for me. The first person that come to be buried, whoever they are, would you bury them for me?" Yes. But he didn't stop there. He said, I'll pay the cost. Okay. Anonymous, I'll pay the cost. Okay. So the, the, they don't know, I don't know who's going to be the first person to be buried there, but whoever they are. Lord, your, your phone to the ring now. It's going to be cool. It's a what? Okay. She said, well, it's an animal alert. But it's all together. How they going to have an alert on my show? But anyway, I'll tell her for now, I need to say that's because I want to get, I know you got to go. 
Uh, 3508064. That's it. You got somebody dead. Well, I'm just saying, the way that's the only reason you go to the cemetery is you're dead. 3508064. Mm -hmm. Also, let them know we have ministers full time to do committals of the bodies. Mm -hmm. If they don't have anybody, we also have the. Uh, I'm not in the just call them. Yeah, or we have a chapel too at our place. Okay. We can do the funeral or we can do the committal in case of inclement weather. Okay. We have a chapel right here on the site. You can put a chapel out there? We got a chapel. The chapel is a church building. But it's okay. A okay. It's a nice okay. building. Okay. 2,550 people okay. can come in or they can use it ready for repass. Okay. okay. But all of that, we want an all inclusive right there. Okay. All right. And it's a lot of They're going to pay a little bit more if they want to repass. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Uh, you're saying on eleven hundred dollars. No, you ain't gonna get the damn repairs and the film for eleven hundred and the grade for eleven hundred dollars. Quit being cheap, okay? But if you don't have money, some of y'all right now, y'all got loved ones that's passed on, and y'all trying to nickel and dime and come up with trying to go to some of these cemeteries. See, that was a business that I was gonna start that I couldn't get anybody to do it. Sell me the caskets. Mm -hmm. See, people don't realize that the marker on a casket is a thousand to twelve hundred percent. Okay? A thousand a casket that you pay six thousand dollars for probably didn't cost the funeral home no more than eight hundred dollars. Okay? The markup is tremendous. What I wanted to do, and I should have got the space now, was to start a casket selling company. Okay? Because the Federal Trade Commission, the law says that you do not have to buy your casket at the mark of price. You do not have to buy your casket from a funeral home. That's federal law. You can buy a casket anywhere that you want to buy a casket from, and a funeral home on the federal law cannot turn that casket away. They have to take the casket. It's a federal, I couldn't get, I couldn't get local casket companies to sell me no caskets because they didn't want to upset the funeral home. And I thought I could probably move a bunch of caskets because people don't know what the law is. You can go online and buy a casket. But here's what I want you to do. Take this number down. 3508064. What we need to do is cut a visual commercial. We need to cut a visual commercial where the folk can see the cemetery, see the land. It's right up the street from my church. It's uh, right off of New Allen Road. Off of New Allen Road. Bluffwood and 3627 Royal Wood. It's, huh? I want to make sure it's clear. When you come up New Island on Royal, okay. you come up two streets, turn on Bluffwood, it's going to lead you right into the, into cemetery. the cemetery. And it's okay. set between two houses, 3641 and 3627 of Bluffwood, right there. So, so you know you need a cemetery, and you don't have a whole lot of money. $1,100. And he's already said that the first person some pastor has already said that the first person they're gonna pay for the grave. Now your phone will ring now. Now, now that's not a plot. You still live. We talking about the first burial. Yeah, I mean we ain't talking about my mama gonna die next week. No, no your mama needs to die tonight, so you can call him in the moment. Also, but it's three five zero eight zero six four three five zero eight zero six four. Take that number down again, 3508064. It's black, he's the owner of the cemetery. <clears throat> and you sure ain't got to worry about no, nobody stacking up on each other right now. Hell, he ain't got the first one in there. Yeah, and not, another thing is, we've already made plans for the future. Okay. We've got 17 acres there, but right down the street, we also got number 19 acres. And, and that is what happened with uh, Galilee yeah. Cemetery. Because the old man and I were friends, and he advertised with me after his death, his son took over the center, and they just started sitting them on top of each other. I got a brother out there, I ain't, you know, you know, 
I don't, I, I don't know why it's better or who's on top of it or who we on top of. Okay? But this is not going to happen. And you got, well, them see, we want to go to the white folk cemetery. Well, if you ain't got no money, you got to go where your money take you. So I'm urging you, and we're going to get a uh, commercial so that you can see where the cemetery is. Uh, but calling, it's only $1,100. That's a total cost. You ain't got to have no vault. You ain't got to have nothing else. You're going to take any type of headstone they want to put on? No. You got to have a flat marker. Got to have a flat headstone. Okay. Flat headstone. Uh, call in 350-8064. If you're watching me tonight and your loved one has passed away and y'all having a problem with the money and the burial, you need to take this number down. Call him. Back to the calling right now. 350-8064. We'll be talking more about this as we go on. The Raleigh Frazier Memorial Cemetery. All right. I got one minute left. Most important thing, do not forget this Saturday from 10 until 4 at the Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministries. We're located at 3835 Raleigh Millington Road. 3835 Raleigh Millington Road. From 10 on till 4. I'm bringing in a speaker all the way from Houston, Texas. Also, the Memphis uh, Child Advocacy Center is going to be there. We've got other speakers. It's all about molestation. No more secrets, no more lies. It's time to talk about this particular issue. In the, in the Child Advocacy Center, in the training that they're going to give you, you'll be able to take the training that they're going to give you in this workshop back to your organizations, back to your particular church. Bring your, youth, your young ladies groups to this. Girl Scout groups, y'all need to come. 10 o'clock, it's gonna be in the gymnasium on this uh, Saturday morning. All right, thank you so very much. Uh, okay, I'm getting a thing on my wall at the church. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, we'll do this, I'll be shop again on tomorrow night. Thank y'all and good night. The, uh, I'll get the power out at the church. Thank you, sir. Hey, Christine, how you doing? What's going on? Call Sean and see if he's out and about.